Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, we'll look at the curves filter in the effects module of On One Photo Raw. The curves you can do so many different things with, like too many things to cover in a single video. So what we'll do in this video is I'll go through what curves is, just talk about generally, how does the tool work? and then show you a variety of applications of how you use it and what you can do with the curves to adjust your photo. If you like videos like this, hit the subscribe button. If you're thinking about adding On One Photo Raw or any of the plugins to your workflow, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there that can save you some money. So let's get into curves. Let's first get a curves filter added to our filter stack here. Now, how do we read this? This this is a looks like a confusing tool. It's like, okay, I understand opacity, but what's the rest of this stuff? Default, and I, I've got a few styles in here. Uh, but then I've got reds, greens, blues, and this weird looking line. How do I read this thing? Well, the, the way the curves tool works, curves uh, are relationship with your histogram. So often in, have your histogram open so you can get a visual idea of what's going on here. Let me open up the levels. Here's the histogram for this photo. Now, uh, the way I like to think about the curves tool, let's start with the basics here. The very bottom, lower left corner, that is pure black. And the upper right corner is pure white. And notice on the x-axis, we start at dark, pure black, and go all the way across to pure white. That's just like our histogram, right? The histogram goes from pure black all the way over to pure white. Then uh, I like to think of the curves in four different regions, just four general tonal regions, like you know our deep shadows, low midtones, upper midtones, and then bright highlights. And those relate to the same segments of a histogram. You can divide the histogram in the same kind of way. So now back to the curves area. This is pure black, and let's talk about like our deep shadows here. Well, we can have how dark or how bright any point on these curves is. So we can take like the shadow area and normally it's very dark, it's very deep, but we could raise that curve up and make the shadows a little brighter. So uh, that's the general layout of the tool. Pure black all the way up to pure white and so far no curve, right? Because we have a linear relationship. We are not changing the nature of any of these tonal areas. Now let's let's dive into that. Let's do an example. Let's start with something that's uh, just, just fundamental. I'm just going to grab a single point. The way you work with the curves, I can click on the curve and I get a point. Notice the cursor is now this little hand. If I drag this curve upward, I'm saying make the tones brighter, right? I've just taken the middle of this curve and said make everything brighter. And you notice as I raise the midtones, you notice that histogram is starting to shift farther and farther to the right to so make things brighter. And the tool tries to interpolate a natural curve between the points that I've defined from here to here and then here. This is where the name curves comes from. Well, I can have another point and say, oh, I want my midtones really, really bright, but I don't want my highlights that bright. I'll grab this and I'll pull it down and the photo is going to start looking very strange. I can take this one. I say, oh, I don't want to mess my shadows up. In fact, I want my shadows really, really deep. Now, I would not want to do this to a photo, but what I want to show you here is what's going on with the tonal regions. Like here, this point here. Notice as I pull this way far down, those shadow areas are getting very, very dark. The left edge of the histogram is getting crowded, right? I'm taking more and more of those tones and shoving them down farther and farther on this deep, dark, shadowy area. I'm saying take these tones here that are normally this bright and darken them, and then the curve gets interpolated. Uh, one other thing you'll notice is this is a very sharp curve, right? This is a, you know, a, lot of, a lot of bend going on here. Well, generally, with the curves tool, less is more. Small adjustments can give you very dramatic results. Let's reset that curve before uh, we go crazy with the uh, with the <laughs> the coloring there. And I want to show you uh, the first uh, first like, classic example of uh, of you know using a curve is a gentle S curve as it's called. We'll take about the quarter way point in the shadows. Click, and I'm going to drag downward a little bit. I'm going to do the exact opposite up here. Take the mid to upper highlights, click, drag that up a little bit. I've added a little bit of contrast. 
I've said, make the shadows a little more shadowed, make the highlights a little more highlighted, and let the curve blend things together. And notice the contrast boost before and after, right? Now, would we do an S-curve with all the other tools we have? We have contrast control. We have dynamic contrast. Uh, potentially, there are still cases where uh, dynamic contrast or just a contrast slider don't quite get you what you want because you have very precise control over highlight and shadow with the curves tool. I've got an entire course on mastering light and shadow in Photo Raw, and things like these tiny little adjustments really do make sense. Let me show you one other example with just this photo here. Let's reset it. And let's say we only wanted to take our very deep shadows and make them deep. So we've got like some deep tones in some of this concrete, the roof here, but the rest of the scene, we don't want to affect too much. Now, one thing the Curves tool does not have, we don't have an eyedropper. I can't just pick a tone here, so I have to have some general inkling that, all right, I got some shadows here, I've got some shadows here, I certainly have highlights here. This is all probably mid-tone. Let's take some deep shadows, like way down here, and grab those and make them really deep. Pull that down. But very close by, I'll take that point and kind of return the curve almost to normal. It's trying to get like relining it up on the normal linear relationship. And now as I pull this dark part up and down, less of the photo gets affected because this point here, it's almost acting like an anchor. We can set multiple anchor points if you really needed to and get very fine grained control. Uh, once again, you know, you have other tools. You could say, I'm just going to use a local adjustment and darken shadows and then use a mask. Totally fine. That works as well. Curves is another way to do it. Let's reset that. And one more quick kind of classic example with just the uh, tonal curve. You can redefine the black point and the white point. I can take pure black and raise it up and say, you know, pure black is no longer pure black. It's kind of just deep shadow. And I can do the same with highlights. I can take the highlights and say, you know, pure white's not quite pure white. And then maybe, maybe add a little bit of contrast into that with that same S curve. This is like a classic matte look before and after. Kind of just washing it out a little bit, filming it out a little bit, taking the pure shadows and the pure highlights and squeezing them in. Notice the histogram, right? When we took this point here from pure black, and now the histogram's all the way at that left edge, and I brought it upward, I said, oh, nope, sorry, you're not getting that anymore. This is like the black's slider, but you have very, 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 very tight control. You can say just those infinitesimal blacks need to be way there, and the rest of it goes okay. Same thing with the white point, right? Here's our white point. Normally it's here. Histogram's all the way at the edge. We can tug it back. So there's a lot of different control you have with the curves to control light and shadow. And that's the only thing we've been looking at right now, just this all section of the curves. It's really the tonal curve. This is what controls light and shadow. There are other curves as well for the major color channels. Let's have a look at those. Well, let's reset that curve. And we have red, green, and blue. Now, these three color channel curves they work the same way as what we saw with the controls. We can grab points and we can drag upward or downward. The way color curves work is you're really taking two colors and playing them against one another. In this example here, we have the red channel open or the red curve open. This is red versus cyan. So it's kind of like red up on the top and cyan down on the bottom. As I add more red, as I raise the point and add red, I'm actually removing cyan and vice versa. If I were to pull down and take away red, I'm adding cyan into the mix. So there's this interesting push and pull we have with these two opposing colors. In this example, the roof and some of the rust on these gates, that's you know, primarily a reddish tone. 
and they're primarily shadowy tones. So we could pull this point down here and say, you know what, I want to boost up those reds a little bit in the shadows, but not so much anywhere else. I have that control, and by boosting red, I'm removing cyan from those areas, right, before and after. Now, of course, I have other controls I could do this with. I could do this with the color adjustment tool. But this is an example of how curves work, and you can get very, very detailed with this. Uh, let's take a look at the other two. We have green, and green is a play of green versus magenta, right? We can add more green, or if we pull a curve down, we're actually adding magenta. Removing green is adding magenta. Adding green is removing it magenta, right? So you have that play of green versus magenta. And then in the blue curve, we have blue versus yellow. Add more blue if we push it up. When we pull it down, we're actually adding in more yellow. And for a scene like this, you know, adding in more yellow, that could be interesting for the grasses, right? So maybe for the grasses, we might say, you know, the grasses are kind of shadowy keep the highlights in check before and after. We're giving warmth to that foreground by virtue of just a curves. And if you're thinking along the lines of, ooh, I could go mask now. I don't want that, uh, that yellowish cast to be on the farmhouse in this example. Yes, you have access to all of your masking tools, all of your blending options, just like every other filter in Photo Raw. So we've got all the masking tools. We've got all the blending options. So curves becomes very, very powerful. One little quick recipe I'll show you with curves and the colors is like a twilight recipe. You take red and nudge it up just a little bit. Take green, nudge it down just a little bit. Take blue, nudge it up just a little bit. You've kind of shifted the scene into a twilight area, right? Where you've got those purples going on. There's a lot less of um, you know the, the 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 warmth is kind of gone from the scene. It's it's shifted to a twilight look, right? We've added a little red here. The big one is the green. You know, really, what we're doing is we're taking away green and adding in magenta. Remember, when we pull green down, we add magenta, and then blue is just giving a little more of that cool evening time. So that's a one quick, you know, uh, kind of little recipe with a curve that is a nice little touch and it's very easy to do. Uh, one final thought about curves. I mentioned the masking, I mentioned the blending options. Well, with filters and curves is a filter, we can have more than one curve, right? I can go and add a second one. I can go add another curve and do something completely different for segments of the scene with my masks. So added together, these things become incredibly powerful. I will uh, say once again, curves, you can do fundamentals with other tools, right? You can do a contrast adjustment with other tools. But if you're getting into those fine details where a very specific tonal range needs to be adjusted, and you're having a little trouble, say, with a mask is not quite getting it, or I just, every once in a while, I'll just turn to curves because I know how to work it. I can set those points exactly where I need them. Micro adjustments, less is more with the curves. And it still is a very powerful and useful tool to have in your arsenal. Spend some time with them, play around with them, get used to them, and they will become your friend. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, go ahead and drop them below. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.